Chapter 961, The Mountain God Incident. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the podcast. I am the best guy ever, and this is Give and Take. That's what I say. Mm -hmm. I call myself, uh, I say that every day. It's just like one of those things. And it's time for Chapter 961, The Mountain God Incident. And let's... Look at our cover page. Yes. This is number 11 of this saga of the Capone crew. What are they up to this week, Gib? Well, we've got uh, Mr. Frog Yowie Hands McGee over here um, yep. holding yep, a man yep. who has been brutally kissed on, mm -hmm. on near the mouth. <laughs> thankfully, not yep. on the mouth. Um, on the kidney, it and, seems. And on, yeah, like a lower, like, left teet. She, 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 I, I, <laughs> yeah. I don't know what she was going for over there, the but she kissed seat. him there. Um, mm -hmm. This, I assume, is Lola, because that um, was the thing. I remember, I remember, I haven't, you know, checked, but I remember mm -hmm. the fact that her character was not like a big mom character at the time. Maybe it was yeah, planned to be right one, right. but the joke mm -hmm. was she, lo she wants to marry Sanji, and she's an ugly uh, warthog as as a ghost, and then mm -hmm. the it turns out. You know, the beautiful lady trapped inside this warthog was actually a s still kind of a warthog-looking lady. So it was like, Indeed. oh, god damn it, you know? Correct me if I'm wrong, Gib, but, like, it seemed to me that that whole desperately want to get married thing was way more prevalent in the zombie than in the original person of Lola. Um, which I always thought was a little strange. Uh, um, yeah, she I was mean, a little bit into it. Yeah, I haven't I, read in a long time. I, I but, can't remember uh, either. I, I, I assume... Yeah. It's like once the gag had been completed, the whole marriage thing was just going to get in the way of like whatever they yes. were saying next. But now, cover page. It's time for gags. So here we go again, baby. Yeah, so uh, it tur I, I guess <laughs> I, I, I don't know why I thought Lola wouldn't be here because it seems a little mm -hmm. too easy. But um, they did easy. go to the red line already. So, you know, presumably. They, were they following like a, were they following a fucking. Uh, they weren't uh, following a, a Vibri card. card. No, they, they were not. So I this mean, is pure coincidence. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, maybe they stopped okay. along certain islands on the way. They, they. That's probably true. That's probably true. They, they took back a different ship, like they were on mm -hmm. Big Mom's ship, and then they got a yeah. better ship or something. I forget exactly. Because you know, now that I think about it, the la the information they had was from Luffy and the gang. That's just we saw Lola in Thriller Bark, so they were like headed toward Thriller Bark, which presumably is still in the Grand Line. Then again, Gecko Moria has like been out and about. So maybe he took his, you know, it's his big land ship and sailed it elsewhere. I don't know, whatever. Um, yeah, anyway. If we seems, see Lola, that'll be cool. Yeah, it seems like Lola is here, which means Lola mm -hmm. Chiffon um, meet up probably next time or two, that'll be two weeks from now. T -t -t twins! There's a lot of twins in the Big Mom crew, though. There's one, uh, what are the, the like, the non-uplets? There's like nine or ten? No, they're the decuplets, the decuplet twins who can all fuse together. Uh, pretty sick. Okay, anyway, let's get on to today's chapter, The Mountain God Incident. When we last left our heroes, there was a bit of a ruckus fruckus going on, and a big pig god seemed to be attacking the flower capital. So let's check in and see what's going on. Okay. Bang, boom, pop, still happening. <laughs> Here we go. It's still, there's fire, there's brimstone, uh, you know, big pig destroy place. Real bad, mm -hmm. real big suck. Real big <laughs> oof from everyone involved. Very true. And, oh, and, uh, and Odin had just said to Kinemon, give me the pig, yeah. last chapter. So yeah, Odin is like, it. give me that pig. Um, and he's like, no, it's worth a lot of money. And he's arguing. Denshiro here mm. has heard of Odin's exploits. And he's like, oh my god, I'm your biggest fan. Being a big old nerd right <laughs> here. Indeed. Indeed. And uh, then we get uh, cuts. Cuts, I say. Uh, it's not a film. Yeah. Uh, we get similar. panels of uh, some people screaming and, and like exposition screaming, which is something that yeah, happens in One yeah. Piece a lot. I appreciate it because <laughs> it's it's a way to get exposition without like making a certain actual character seem annoying. Mm -hmm. Just mm -hmm. throw just throwing in some background characters to say what's going on for the viewing public. And it says it works. It yeah. works. We get more care. Like this little priest guy, he's kind of cool. He'll probably never show up again, but I like him. Yeah, he's probably long dead. Um, probably. And uh, yeah, talking about how the pig, as we understand, is looking for mm -hmm. its baby, and its scent 
is what it's picking up. It's scent of its child. It's going to munch mm -hmm. and chomp through everything. It's eating humans and houses whole. It is. This is a yep. very fairy tale, terrible thing mm -hmm. that's happening mm -hmm. right here. Big myth. Big mythos. Very big mythos. I said last time this reminded me of Princess Mononoke, right? Yeah, okay, I did. I did. No need to repeat myself, as I often do. Uh, and then we've got the guy who originally stole it, one of the three crew guys, shows up and says, Hey, Kinemon, give us back the boar. We have to give it back to the mountains. My two friends were eaten along with your girlfriend, Otsuru. Oh, no. So everyone's been eaten, uh, presumably whole, and that sucks. And Kinemon is now feeling uh, the big guilt. Yes. Uh, oh, because she was kidnapped by these guys to try to... So for, it was because he had stolen from them. They kidnapped Otsuru like as a way to like get leverage to get the boar back. Understandable, because Kinemon robbed them. And now Kinemon also brought the thing to the village. So he's like double, triple responsible for yeah. bad things happening right now. This is a bad Ooh, boy. Up. This is a bad little mm -hmm. boy right here. Don't do crimes, guys. Don't do crimes. It's not cool. <laughs> so he drops the pigs like, fuck it. I don't care about money mm -hmm. now. My girlfriend, my, my sweetheart uh, from mm -hmm. the ground up is is been eaten mm -hmm. by a big pig. Um, and I, Link, will slay the Ganon. They, indeed. <laughs> this is, uh, uh, this moment, this little exchange, uh, coolest Kinemon has ever been. I actually like Kinemon right now. He, like, was a bad boy. He's going to try to fight this fucking god demon boar man to get back the girl he likes. Uh, he doesn't give a shit. He's, he's not like a super crazy strong guy. Uh, good character. I am good, good yeah. Kinemon shit right now. It's Every, like excellent. It's, it's always like a little funny when they start off like as, mm -hmm. a, as a street urchin. Like, ah, I, I don't give a fuck mm -hmm. about anything. But like this is Indeed. showing his honorable side. The side which... Um, uh, Otsuru can see mm -hmm. is good mm -hmm. in him, you know? That's the reason Indeed. she likes him. He keeps saying, ah, whatever, my life is worthless, doesn't matter if I die, I'll just do whatever I want. And she, like, hits him on the head, like, you fucking idiot, I care about you, but I'm not gonna I say I care it. about you, the classic tsundere move. Oof, that's good. She's very cute. She looks very cute in these. Yeah. Very waifu. So, yeah, he jumps up, and he does... I don't know if he has any skills at this point. I, I know he's mm -hmm. very strong mm -hmm. compared to the, the other Yakuza, yeah, uh, compared to... Uh, they do say that. Based yeah. on what Hyogoro the Flower mentioned. Uh, so he's already mm -hmm. notable in strength. He jumps up mm -hmm. and he stabs the boar and he gets crunched. He gets smashed. Oof, he's a bloody mess. Ouch, that's no good. Don't do that, Kinemon. But, uh, I mean, he's got a plan right now to slice open the stomach and get Otsuru, and I guess the other guy's back. Uh, but, oof, bam, smashed again, and he is the unconscious. Well, almost. And he's just, he's just real sad. Yeah. And Otsuru dies because of me, it's, uh, that's, that's no good. That's no good at all. Big feels. Big feels. Yeah. I, uh, this is already good. Emotions are heightened. I'm, I'm enjoying this. Yeah. Uh, and then, the big moment. Mm. Uh, Odin grabs the boar, the little one. He says, hey, bitch, I got your <laughs> boy. I'm going to cook and eat him. What do you think about that? And do you he, like that big the intimidation pig glare that he's doing as he turns around to look yeah. at Odin? It's a very good panel right there. Big fan. Big Yeah, pig. so um, <laughs> big thing to note here, as we see yeah. at the end of the chapter, it's sort of mm. re restated, that Odin is making a big deal about how he like, did this, and he's like mm, making no, no, no attempt to like shirk... Um, responsibility, even though it wasn't him who brought the boar here. He, everyone Indeed. believes it's him because he's such a bad guy. Do, and, you, um, do you share my suspicion that this will branch into other legends and nefarious deeds that yes, are attributed I, to I, him? I think the things, be. a lot of the things mm. we heard last time that made him out to be a kind of a scumbag, but a funny scumbag, oh. um, were, you know, it was sort of put to rest when we saw him doing, like, a, a kind of scummy thing that turned out to be an honorable thing for a dying s skeleton man, uh, you know, giving him a Indeed. last meal with his buddy or whatever, just a, a last send off. <laughs> um, so this lots of misunderstandings and shit. This is like <laughs> him taking the fall for Kinemon, taking the blame because he's so cool. He's so like I don't give a fuck that he can mm -hmm. take it and burden uh, on his shoulders. He can take any burden. He's taking all the blame. And it's really yep. cool. 
Indeed. Uh, so I, I would be curious to kind of reread last chapter, and it'd be, it'd be fun to read through all of the things they said he did and imagine, like, how he could have gotten himself mixed up in those things. Like, I don't know, like the harem thing? Maybe, maybe someone else kidnapped all the women, and he was there, like, he had stumbled upon them and was, like, defending them? I mean, I don't know. Maybe that one's a little bit different, because you'd think those women would set the record straight. But maybe just like now... He's like, with Kinemon, he's like, don't bother clarifying. It's fine. I don't care if I take the blame. Don't worry yeah. about it. We, we can or talk maybe, about, like, we can look, yeah, we can yeah. read over it, like, uh, like at the end of this, because it probably won't take, yeah, okay. take too long. Or, or how about, uh, you know, that one where he was age zero and, like, threw his wet nurse across the room or whatever? Oh, that was some, some good old-fashioned domestic abuse between family members. And he was just like, I'm a baby. Just say it was me. No big <laughs> deal, guys. It's just yeah. fine by me. What if, what if he was a good guy every single time? Ooh, that would be insanity, but let's, uh, we shall see. I have a feeling they'll get into that more as, uh, yeah. as time goes on. So here he goes. So cool action Odin pose. Odin, two-sword style. Mm -hmm. If you notice, before he swings, uh, mm -hmm. before they turn the page, he's, done, he's doing that thing where his muscles are all, like, going ape shit, which is, a, uh, I assume... Zoro did that, I think, The same right? sort of muscle, point. like, cl clenching all the muscles at once... To, for maximum power. I uh, guess. <laughs> yeah. You know, if you clench every <laughs> single muscle, you become indestructible. Gorilla man, yeah. <laughs> Something like that. He does a really cool sideways slash, cuts the whole boar's mouth head completely off. Mm-hmm. Bisects it down the middle. That looks like pain and not fun. I noticed that pig has the Rene gone from Naruto. That's pretty cool. That's just some deep lore. Uh, and I'm noticing that his swords are indeed both black. He's doing, like, the black blade thing that we, we see sometimes. So I'm yeah. sure that will be more of a thing as time goes on. But uh, cool slash. Looks good. Very so nice here name we as are. well. Paradise Waterfall. That does sound super sick. That sounds very, very cool. Um, so here, here it is. Everyone else was scared. No one else could do anything. Uh, here is Odin, super strong, strongest guy in the world. Pretty cool. Yeah. Pretty cool. Good, good work. And good the work. pig was just slain, and everybody who was eaten by it came out alive, which was lovely. Uh, Do you think, by the way, I'm uh, yeah, and miraculously, so it's not just, uh, you know, Zoro, of course, in like one of my favorite fights in the series, fighting against Mr. One, it's about cutting what you want to cut and not cutting that which you don't want to cut. So presumably, he's so good at the sword slicing, he can cut through the boar, and everyone inside is totally, like... I mean, he, he could have, like, maybe had his vertical or his horizontal slash not hit them on that plane, but more likely he was, like, you know, they, he did that thing of not cutting the people inside via willpower hockey or whatever. Yeah. That's my guess, anyway. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know how, like, I, I my first mm -hmm. assumption was that he only cut the top of the head off so that they could then crawl out of his, like, throat, and, mm -hmm. like, his blade never actually got close to the people in the stomach, um, which would be lower down. I but, I mean, in these panels, it looks like it's going down his body, straight away, down the down the jaw. Yeah, I, you know, I don't know, whatever. It, do, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. By the way, do you think that Zoro could have pulled off the same power level? I'm just kind of I'm kind of thinking about, like, where's Zoro well, at relative to this You know, guy? I was thinking, because this is all like, mm -hmm. oh, my God, Odin's so young and he's doing all this. Uh, Odin is 18 He is 18. Here. He is 18 years old. But, he looks like he's 45, but it's pretty sick. Yeah, but... Um, <laughs> Worth remembering that, like, Zoro is only, like, 19 or 21. So like 21 or something, Like, I at think? the beginning of the series, Luffy was 17. So it was, like, all the stuff that he did before the time skip as a 17-year-old. Mm -hmm. That's, yeah, pretty, that's yeah. pretty epic, you know? So, like, an 18-year-old being this strong, not actually that outside the realms of possibility for One Piece. I, and I just double-checked, Zoro at the start... We shouldn't forget, Zoro at the start of the series went from, like... You know, pretty strong guy, hunted bounty hunters. Uh, he was 19 at the time. He went all the way from that to, like, beating uh, fucking Mr. One, beating, uh, you know, Kaku uh, in fucking Eni's lobby, uh, you know, doing all kinds of crazy shit, and then even fighting Bartholomew Kuma, and then post-time skip. He's been, like, an unchallenged beast, basically, the entire time. And hopefully this arc, he'll get uh, an actual fight. But now he's 21, so he's, so he's 21 for, for comparison's sake. Yeah. So. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. So yeah, everyone got out alive, and it's all lovely. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's all the all the men, all the men who feel mm. totally um, emasculated for not having been <laughs> able to do that. It's like, oh, it was so cool, but 
he he was the one in charge. You know, we should, like, cancel him. I, I feel like we should cancel him, but I don't want to, mm because -hmm. he was so mm -hmm. fucking sick. Ooh, he made a really embarrassing tweet right before he saved all our lives, so that's not gonna fly. Uh, well, and of course, they think that he's the one who brought the boar, so... Yeah, they and then Kinemon that. is like, I am an honorable man, mm. I will own up to the bonk, and it's like, mm. shut up, mm. shut up, kid. Shut up, boy. <laughs> That's pointless. You don't need to take the fall for that. And then he chad strides away. He's constantly chad striding. He's, he's, I haven't seen a panel sure of him is. who is when he's walking and not <laughs> chad striding. It's true. I don't think he's capable of such an action. Uh, his legs are too chaotic and in Like, they always, whenever he's walking, they just fill the frame with his big muscular knees. Very funny. That's what he does. <laughs> He's kind of he's kind of man spreading as he walks as well, filling the room with his masculine energy, and you can feel he's uh, turning men gay and making <laughs> women pregnant with every gaze about with every, every room. Stomp. It's pretty sick. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So there he goes. So, so oh, and and of course now he finally gets the paper of disownment from the boys that were around, and so he's message received. I've been disowned. The flower capital can't handle this Chad stride. So off I go gonna head out uh, elsewhere, outside the flower capital. So there it goes, off to adventure. Have yeah, fun. and it says that by age 18, Odin had caused the mountain mm -hmm. god incident, which he hadn't, mm -hmm. but people remember no, that not he really. had. And, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. you know, everybody knows that he saved them, and he doesn't give a shit whether or not, like, that's the, uh, I think that was the thing I was saying last time, mm -hmm. like, he just doesn't give a single fuck about what people think, because he knows yeah. he's right, yeah. he knows he's so good. Very Luffy-esque, you know, just does what he wants yeah, to do and that, just does not care what people think. That's the will think. of D, it's the will of D... The will of his huge dick. Oh, yeah. O-D-N, definitely an O-D-N situation here. And definitely has a massive cock. There's no, there's no doubt about it. It's a man <laughs> of this stature. Uh, and of course, we get the thing where, so Kinemon reunited with Otsuru, she's happy to be alive. Uh, not too upset with Kinemon anymore, it seems. But Kinemon is overcome with emotion and appreciation for what Odin has done for him. Uh, and Denjiro, of course, also feels, as we saw before, pretty pretty into the guy. So the two of them both chase after him, and this appears to be where Odin has acquired his first two followers, Denjiro and Kinemon. Yeah. So uh, there you go, the first two boys on, so, his, on his team. Um, yeah, as far as I can remember from what we've learned mm -hmm. happens with Odin, he goes mm -hmm. to, like, a really rough place and, like, mm -hmm. turns all of these criminals around mm -hmm. uh, in, and turns that place into, like, a thriving good community. And people are like, wow. Yeah, eventually. Mm -hmm. And so I assume that's where we'll meet, like, Ashura Doji and, and stuff. It, it was said previously that Ashura Doji, like, was, like, the boss kind of leading yeah. that, like, ruffian area first. So he'll he'll meet him up there, fight him some point. And uh, presumably meet the other guys too, maybe Conjuro and. I wonder about et cetera, et cetera. the the cat and dog. Where uh, did, are they on Wano? Did we, they? I mean, we saw them in the in a previous flashback with with Yasuie that um like they were like kids when they were with Owen. So like it can't be much later than this. And, like, we know that that clan was, like, sworn to the Odin since, like, a long time ago. Or to the to the Kozuki clan, I mean. So, they're probably here as kids. Or, like, they'll show up relatively soon as, you know, like, young creatures or whatever. So, yeah, I don't know. I don't know why they would be here, but I'm sure we'll get some explanation as to why and where they are once uh, once they show up here. Yeah, so... Oh, by, by the way, I was going to say, a, a guy like me, sometimes, I feel like... I'm a little bit, my, my feelings get raised a little bit when I'm like, Kinemon is really just gonna let Odin get, like, take responsibility when he knows it's his fault that this shit happened. He's really gonna do that. But then I'm just like, eh, Odin's so cool and Kinemon is really grateful. So he's trying to make up for it in his own way by, like, being helpful to Odin and, like, following I mean, I could, I could imagine so, after he got bumped on the head that he was, like, you know... It, it, it Forgot was, it. <laughs> no, no, no. It, he didn't forget. No, uh, <laughs> that he's like on the floor. There, he's like, oh my god, you know, mm -hmm. he was protecting me. After all that, he won't. I know, might as well. He, like, no, he's just sort of like that. make making like in his mind, like Odin mm -hmm. is the coolest guy of all time. What a wonderful man. He took it's the just, fall for me. <laughs> uh, like, I don't know. You know there's going to be conversations around Wano when, like, you know, uh, Kinemon, just some guy sitting around at a table, and the people are like, man, do you hear about that fucking mountain god incident? That fucking asshole Odin. And and Kinemon's going to sit there really sweaty and be no, like, no, no. oh, yeah. Mm. He's not going to do that. He's going to stand up for Odin. 
you know, you probably he'll say in generic terms like, "No, Odin is a good guy," and he won't further clarify why he's a good guy. Yeah. But he'll be for non-specific reasons. I know that Odin is a good person. And then he'll blah, slice blah, blah. him up, stab yep. him up. <laughs> anyway. uh, by the way, you know, uh, Kinemon's following this guy. Uh, we know that Kinemon like was in the Yakuza and like had a big bro or something. So I'm just wondering if perhaps in this flashback he's gonna because you can't just leave the Yakuza uh, without like paying your dues or whatever. So I'm I'm curious if that'll be a narrative for um Yeah, I wonder later. I wonder Yeah, who that could be. Like we I don't think I we've think seen... he'll be a character we meet later. Yeah, is maybe. my guess. Yeah. But yeah, they, they go said off. his name, but I I can't remember. They go off the two of them following him. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh and then I, I don't know what this is showing. I think mm-hmm. it's sort of like there's like a, a text box. At this moment, these men suppress their desire to follow Odin. So a bunch of other people in the capital were like, "God, I want to follow him too," but uh, I got yes. I got yep. taxes to yep. do. I got a wife to feed. I don't know. I can't really <laughs> go. Uh, mm. And they don't. And they but they they kind of want those to. boys. They, they they end like that's the thing. This is the classic One Piece thing. They envy the free spirits of these samurai, of these pirates. You know, of, of One Piece in general. Men feel the urge. That's what One Piece is all about, to adventure and quest and do fun things that feel good. And Odin's whole thing is that he feels that Wano is too cramped. He wants to roam the world and explore and shit. And uh, I think these boys feel a, a similar yeah. urge. But in the panel, there's like a slip thing. I guess it's sort of the balance of the capital was tilted in more ways than one, so it's like... I guess that's the sound of a town, balance tilting. It sounds like slip. Like, That's what it sounds like. Like, if, if the whole town is like, <laughs> I don't know. Oh, maybe pirating is good. Maybe being free is good. Maybe <laughs> yeah. we should open the country. Little known onomatopoeia <laughs> for that in Japanese. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> slip. Slip. Maybe a uh, manga stream translates it differently. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, anyway, sounds like they head on over to Hakumai, where fucking Yasuie is the lord, is the daimyo. And they're coming to say hello yeah. And konnichiwa to all the boys. There's, there he is. There's there's so, Yasuie looking ridiculous, as always. So Yasuie is like, fuck you, you got exiled, fool, idiot, mm-hmm. loser, and you brought some henchmen, <laughs> what are you, gay? And then uh, before any actual conversation can happen, a big mm-hmm. nerd, a big uh, yes man, uh, yep. loser boy, jumps into a puddle <laughs> and says, oh, please step on me, please. Please step on me, Chad. Please fuck my Veronica girlfriend. I would love that <laughs> if you would do that, sir. Uh, and he calls him a creepy <laughs> Just weirdo. kidding. He's a virgin. We all know he's a virgin. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, go yeah, on. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> so Odin calls him a creepy weirdo. Do not be so rude. Mm. He's my newest servant. He's Orochi Okurazumi. Okurazumi. Mm. Bum, bum, bum. Bum, bum. It's the guy. The future man who would kill Odin and seize the fucking shogunate from his family. Oh, the so, implications. Yeah. The things that could happen here are numerous. Do you think, here's my mm-hmm. question, do you think he's yep. already a man- maniacal evil man? That's a great question. You know, honestly, yes, Orochi is a bad man. I don't get the, I think we talked about this before. Uh, like many chapters ago or something. Like I don't get the vibes of Orochi as like like I don't know, uh, e- even like crocodile level like maniacal or or, or f- fucking like like um, uh, better example is Enru. Like Enru was like I'm God. I will kill everyone who gets in my way, and I will just kill people literally for fun because I feel like it. This guy doesn't strike me the same way. He's like like right now he strikes me as like pathetic. Like yes, he's power hungry, but mostly he's just like a jealous, conniving kind of guy, and he's just wanting to like he's very fearful as like the operative emotion of Orochi, mm. as opposed to, like an Enaru who is like just haughty and insanely arrogant, or a crocodile who like has a specific goal during Alabasta to like you know take over the country, find Pluton, rule the world or something. This guy, I th- I feel like this is more likely. Something that's going to be like, Orochi will maybe somehow, he'll be a servant, he doesn't, like, he's probably resentful of the upper class, and he probably hates his lowly station, but feels he has to do it to survive or whatever. Uh, It's already, it's notable, he's a servant of a lord. That's a fairly prominent position. I mean, yeah, he's, like, prostrating himself and humiliating himself, but even to be, like, in the presence of these guys, like... That's got to be, you know, yeah. kind of significantly high-ranking as a servant as opposed to other people. I, I definitely so, feel I don't know. like if he's, like, 
become black pilled. It's already happened because mm -hmm. he's not a child. Yeah. He's he's probably putting up with this, but he secretly has plans to be like I wish I was a rich I wish I was mm -hmm. the the mm -hmm. biggest guy of all time. And so <laughs> he'd 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 put on a front to get him to places where he wants to be. And yeah. when he can stab someone in the back to gain position in, of power, he will do so mm -hmm. with no Ma with no qualms. I think I think what's going to happen is that I think he's relatively innocent but resentful. But I think an opportunity, like maybe he'll get that devil fruit of the like Orochi, uh, you know, dragon devil fruit or whatever that he, that we see as later. Um, like that'll happen, and then he'll be like, oh. All of a sudden, I didn't necessarily expect this, but I've always hated these guys, and I now have power, so I will, like, seize the throne. Like, something's gonna happen, and he'll, it'll just, like, fall into his lap somehow. I, I don't know, because he's not, like, that smart or that impressive. He, he's a little bit smart. He's not, like, a total dunce he, or anything. I mean, I, we don't have enough information on this alone yeah. uh, to mm -hmm. really gauge what he is like right now. But I feel, like, yeah. cowardly and submissive because, you know... I mean, mm -hmm. the sort of person who would fuck over his friends for the yeah. better, uh, you know, for his own benefit. So mm -hmm. it's like mm -hmm. his evilness will come from like the desire not to be poor again. So it's like from, yeah, I agree from I a good agree. place, uh, generally speaking. But you know, mm -hmm. you don't do that, bro. You just don't do that. You don't kill people. You don't. I mean, I mean, I guess uh, there is a conversation to be had about the uh, inherent morality of an aristocracy, uh, I, like, and why do those people have the right to rule over everyone? There's no morality inherent in an inherited uh, rulership or aristocratic system. So maybe Orochi is like a freedom fighter, and he's like, "Hey, you guys, I'm gonna shake up this." Uh, that's not gonna happen. It's no. gonna be like a greed-based thing. It's gonna be something like that. Um, well, yeah, it's, yeah, I don't it, know. The thing, the, the, the distinction I'm, I'm thinking of is, like, is he yeah. going to fall from grace, mm -hmm. or is he going to already have fallen from grace and just be, uh, like, a person who, you know, he, he doesn't have a chance to be a good ruler, he just wants to be a ruler, and he does it, gets there through bad means. Um, I think this page in this chapter was a metaphor he's going to fall on the floor and roll around in the metaphorical puddle of evil <laughs> this is my <laughs> theory as to what's yes, gonna happen we're so fucking I, smart here on the podcast so metaphor Ooh, oda goda does it again everybody <laughs> uh really okay we'll we'll see Appar yeah. okay no new chapter next week it seems so we got you know like a week and a half to wait or whatever till the next one but uh more flashback please oda don't don't pull any sneaky shit and like cut away and show us chapters in real life. I hope this this flashback continues for a good. Yeah, it's good, it's weird. Uh, ideally, yeah, go on, go the, on. There's like how, how much are we gonna get info on this? Because like, because we know a lot already. Frankly, I I, I felt that I feel the need to remind people, mm -hmm. or at least you for for sure, that like mm -hmm. the first half of Dress Rosa. Mm -hmm. um, was actually well paced and quite good, actually. I agree. Yeah. And the second yeah. half is where the unbelievably long lore flashback, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right after the very quite long Rebecca Puppet Man flashback, mm -hmm. is just sort of too mm -hmm. many uh, serious flashbacks. I feel like with all this Odin and Orochi stuff happening, if it takes mm -hmm. a really long time, and then we need to learn about Kaido before beating him as well. It'll become yeah, another big thing. Yeah. Like, by the way, Kaido, uh, here, here he is, because he, he he really has nothing to do with the story until he arrives, as like a re uh, a way to like overthrow Odin mm -hmm. or whatever. Right, that's true. But I mean, we did not know where he came from. I thought he might have been like a rival lord, but clearly he is not. He is in fact a humble servant who somehow miraculously becomes the fucking shogun, and and I mean, we'll learn about how that happens, I guess. Gabe, if you were to pick a number, how many chapters would you want this flashback to continue, considering the very likely Kaido flashback to happen mm. later in uh, in the arc? Uh, I'm thinking maybe like three to four chapters I'd be perfectly happy with. From this point, yeah. That seems like plenty of time to cover all this I shit I think, to me. yeah, three. You could, like, the, the, the mm -hmm. next chapter could set up the the arrangement that Odin has mm -hmm. outside of the capital, how he copes being a person mm -hmm. uh, exiled, 
and you, we, we we've see... already covered like how cool Odin is. We got that down. We've seen yeah. that he's strong and a badass. We need to set up like his little lordship in that place. He's gonna like take over or whatever. We need to see him meet all his boys. Even just one panel for some of the ones. That's totally fine. And then we're gonna like finish Orochi backstory. And then maybe even as much. And that's this could tie it into the Kaido one too. Maybe of like him meeting Lady Toki, his fucking wife. And like starting his family, and then finally being overthrown later on. Yeah, I feel like, like this is know. like the beginning flashback mm -hmm. for Odin, and we don't mm -hmm. really need to see after, after he gets his like squad together. Mm -hmm. um, we don't need to see Orochi rise to power and overthrow him. We could get that right. from um, him like taunting people from the yeah. the nine yeah. red scabbards, like "Haha, fuck you! I killed him. I'm the cooler guy." <laughs> Indeed. Indeed. You know, it, I guess it's it's fair to say, like, we've been told that Orochi fucking killed Odin, considering how powerful Odin is, uh, and presumably will be, versus this, you know, little fuck boy here. It is, I mean, maybe his devil fruit will be more powerful, but then again, he had Kaido. He had Kaido's help in doing that, yeah, so... Yeah, I guess okay, it would be a enough. combination of Kaido punch, and then... A oh, chomp. and we shouldn't forget... We know that Odin gave Kaido his one and only scar with his fucking sword. So we know they're going to fight at some point and there's going to be some kind of, you know, altercation. That'll probably be when he's killed. It's got to be Kaido. At this point, it's probably going to be Kaido himself who, like, kills, um, you know, what's his face? Uh, Odin. That's my guess anyway. They have to fight at any rate. Unless it's like a, unless they do like a weird thing, because they said it was his sword that kills him. Maybe it'll be like a fancy thing where like Kaido, like yeah. kills him or whatever, and like Lady Toki takes up the sword and cuts uh, him with it or something. It'll be it'll be I like like uh, Kaido punches Odin, crushes him immediately, and then Oof. you know later he takes his swords, steals them. It's like, mm -hmm. hey, I could use these to like cut my onions. Kill myself. For, <laughs> like like cut my onions in the kitchen. Like and he's in the right. kitchen cutting onions with a samurai sword, and he's like, ooh, ow, ooch, I accidentally cut myself. He, I, now there's a scar oh, cool. here. <laughs> oh, that would be embarrassing. <laughs> yeah. Well, I guess that's uh, that's all we know right now, and we will see next chapter, next couple of chapters. Oda, pace yourself. You got a long arc here. Don't feel the need to do this shit for too long. I'll be. This is chapter two of the flashback. I'll be very curious to see how long it lasts. Um, yeah. So let's uh, let's get to it. Let's get to it. Luckily, I don't I don't feel that Oda. Thank God, like, Odin here is a way wackier and sillier character and not crazily beloved by, like, Fujoshis all over the fucking world demanding, like, a 30-fucking chapter flashback of their precious Babu Law. Um, thank he's, God he's, for that. He's too manly for, for the he's ladies. He's too sick. That's true. If they he's, read he's, too he's many the, chapters of him... Of, He's the sort of man that a man would mm -hmm. like, you know, like we're all gay <laughs> now, you see. <laughs> you said it, sister. Uh, <laughs> all right. Well, I guess that's it for this chapter. We'll be back in, a, I don't know, two weeks, week and a half, whatever, when the next chapter's out. And uh, we'll pick it up from there, boys. <claps> Sounds fun. Yeah. All right, and don't forget, everybody, patreon.com slash thepodcastpirates. We appreciate your support. Join the crew mm -hmm. for as little as a dollar and as high as infinite money per month. We'd very much appreciate that. And, uh, oh, follow our new Twitter, at, oh, what is it? It's, uh, at Podcast Ahoy, oh, I yeah. believe, is it? <laughs> I Linked out. That was all I, thing. I tried to fucking find, like, a, a more normal one, but that was the best I could do. So, at Podcast Ahoy <laughs> on Twitter, tweet us fun things so we can look at them. It'll be excellent. Uh, okay, and that's it. Oh, <laughs> all you know right. what? You know what we could do, yeah. since we have a Twitter now? Um, mm -hmm. if you have, like, a direct question... You could send it there, and we might answer it if it's good. You know, that's that might be a very good th addition to this show, perhaps. Like, if people feel like uh, we've made a mistake, there's something we need to address. I mean, a small like mistake a is sort of that. like... Like, small mistakes are like whatever. But if there's a big yeah, mistake, yeah. we usually uh, try to respond. But uh, if there's like a, a, like a mm, well-formulated mm. version of that complaint in a Twitter question, it'll be easier for us, and we'd more likely do it. Yeah, you know, that's, uh, that's a good idea. That's a good idea. So, uh, okay, if you got anything like that, any points or deep lore things or uh, fucking big mistakes or something, yeah, feel free to let us know, and I'll, I'll look at the Twitter. I'll look at the Twitter. All right, but that's it for this week. We'll see you soon with the next chapter, folks. Uh, a pleasure, as always. Bye! Bye -bye. Sayonara.